Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and today we're reviewing Insidious 5, The Red Door. In this movie, it catches up with the Lambert family after the events of Insidious 2, and it's nine years down the road. And if you remember, at the end of Insidious 2, after all the stuff that family had gone through, they hypnotized both Josh and Dalton so that they would quit fucking around in Furthertonville, and they wouldn't be able to even access it in their sleep if they didn't know anything about it. Now, this causes Rose Byron's character, who's awesome in the movie, by the way. She's not in it enough, but she's really good in it to also have to lie to her kids and lie to Josh because they don't remember all that stuff happening and it causes a rift in the family as a whole and we catch up with him nine years later and Josh's character because of that has this strange as he explains it brain fog and he's estranged he's not a great dad he's not around for his kids very much he's emotionally absent he's estranged from his wife and everything is just but for this family at this point and it's sad because their childhood is over at this point right Dalton's going off to college and he's messed up too I mean he is on some major ocean you are my bitch lover emo shit in this movie and he's going off to art college and the dad drives him there and they have this really emotional relationship where you can see that they're just trying to connect and, and they can't and that's one of the better parts of the movie one of the better done parts of the movie so josh sets off to figure out what's going on with his brain and he gets mris done and other things like that to try to work it out meanwhile dalton is asked while doing art school to like reach within himself to pull out you know some some crazy cool art shit and he starts to unlock this this door of the further and bad stuff starts to happen while simultaneously Josh trying to figure it out is unlocking stuff in his brain as well bad stuff starting to happen the two meet in the further in the further's version of pizza hut which is basically pizza you're fucked I'm so I apologize. And then that's Insidious 5. I'm a huge fan of the Insidious franchise. I really am. Like I love that first movie. It's one of my favorite first time watches in a in a theater when that <laughs> Insidious comes on. It's like just a fun movie. I really like the further. I like this whole vibe of this franchise. And that for me is why this is so disappointing as a movie. So with that being said, let's start with the good the good stuff is I, I have no problems with Patrick Wilson directing this movie. I thought as a first time director, he did a really good job because he understands the franchise and the best parts of this movie are the fact that it feels more insidious than can fucking insidious. I mean, from the first and second movie straight to this movie, it's just the vibe is there. The atmosphere is perfect. The cinematography, the camera work, it, you are in that world. The palettes are a little bit duller. The colors are gray. It's just got this specific look to it. This these insidious movies do and a specific feel too it just kind of feels like someone turned the thermostat up really really high and as a father that's really upsetting we're not trying to cool the whole goddamn neighborhood the acting in the movie is great ty simpkins it's weird because we saw him as dalton as a little kid just doing the little kid thing being scared you know in this situation and now that same actor is an adult and he's pretty much at the forefront of most of this movie and i feel like he does a really good job of it and specifically since he's asked to do so much in this movie to go through this whole array of emotions like i said the first act of this is beautifully shot and it really sets up this deep emotional situation between a father and his son and they both acted the shit out of that and i think patrick wilson is at his acting best in this film even more so than any of the insidious or conjuring movies that i've seen if you like jump scares you're gonna love this movie i mean if that's your thing this movie is just chock full of jump scares there's not very much enduring scares there's not very much suspense but there are shitloads of jump scares so while i said i do think patrick wilson was a good choice to direct this movie that's that's because i'm assuming that him being a first-time director he didn't really have a lot of say in a lot of the choices that the movie's going to make which is where we go into the bad things and that starts with the writing and the story because that's where all the problems lie the movie's written by scott teams who wrote halloween kills he wrote the firestarter remake he's writing the upcoming exorcist movie he wrote this film it also does have a writing credit to lee winnell for story now i don't know if that's just because this movie plays so much on his previous films or if he had a hand in working on this that i don't know but this is the main problem with Insidious, The Red Door, and the reason it infuriated me as much as any movie I've ever seen before. There are just no rules that make any sense when it comes to the further and, and the lore of this franchise. It's just completely broken with this movie. Characters can just lay on the floor and fall asleep willy-nilly and all of a sudden become legendary mode astral projectors. There's one scene where someone 
does like this with their hand and flicks somebody across the room like they're a goddamn superhero. They can run inside of a frat house, hide under a bed, fall asleep like that, and all of a sudden just be able to just willy-nilly all of this shit. They play with the rules. They play with the history of it. They change everything. There's just They just do stuff that makes no sense at all. There's a scene where you can use art to affect what's happening in the further. There's the scenes where stuff's coming into the real world and going back into the further, and it just and none of it makes any sense. It's a goddamn free-for-all of all the lore and all the rules in this movie and just none of it makes any goddamn sense none of it looks hokey or bad or corny and it's all filmed really well but it's very much all of those things story-wise and also there's this gigantic section in the middle of the movie where we do this really weirdly placed scooby-doo frat house situation with dalton and this this roommate he, he meets and they become like buttercream gang best fucking friends in like five seconds and they go to a frat house together and they're gonna show these kids and we're gonna go up in their rooms and go through all their shit and the entire thing is just that section the dialogue was just written like ass and it just did not make any sense in regards to the rest of the movie it felt strange and it felt like it belonged in a completely different franchise and that is where I blame Scott teams because it's exactly like in Halloween Kills where we decided to focus on Tavolti dead in the center of all this madness with Michael Myers happening and the evil dies tonight in the hospital scene it's just like that does it tie into the story yes but did it ever ever need to no, and it's layered with all this extra shit on top of it. It just didn't need to be there. And it's all just too complicated of a story at this point, the way that they've done it. It spends giant swaths of running time going back and literally recreating the events of Insidious 2 at certain points, specifically Insidious 2. And you're just sitting there going, we're going to go through the whole thing? Like, I've seen this before. It's like they didn't learn their lesson from The Exorcist 2, The Heretic, or from Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 even. It's just like you never do that. And if we're at a point in the franchise where you have to spend that much time explaining the situation of where we're at, maybe it's just time to either like just start from somewhere new or do a new story or whatever. I was so excited to jump back into this family. But one of the main problems I have with this movie is the fact that it actually makes Insidious 2 a lesser movie. And here's why, because at the end of Insidious 2, you watch this family go through all this shit, and it's got this happy ending where they beat it, they got out, they made it, they're going to be able to live a happy life as a family, and we're going to hypnotize them. And this, there's just no reason for this movie to exist, because all it does is say, guess we shouldn't have hypnotized them, and then now... We find this family nine years later. These kids' childhood is gone. The family is all broken up. And regardless of what happens at the end of this movie and in the future, it's just a sad story now. This, th these kids did not get to have a childhood. The things that are revealed and that come up from this, it's just no matter what you do, it just makes the feelings you felt at the end of Insidious 2 completely pointless. And why? What did they add? This entire movie didn't add anything new. All it did was just say, we shouldn't hypnotize them because we, sh we could have just not done that because it definitely didn't work because it made everything worse. And that's like the whole point of this movie. So let's get back to square one again, even though 10 years have passed and everyone's life's fucked up. It's just depressing. And you didn't need to do that to these characters. And none of that's a spoiler because that's the opening of the damn movie. It's just like nine years later, everything sucks. So finally, I have, I have serious questions for the powers that be about what their intentions were with this movie. I have no doubt that Patrick Wilson's heart was in the right place with the acting and directing because he he's, does a hell of a job here. And you can tell that there's love in that. But as far as the producers who were handed the script, whether it's, I don't know if it's Blumhouse or it's James Wan or whoever, but the people who read this script, their, their answer should have been, why? Why are we doing this? Instead, it kind of seems like they said, who gives a shit? The, the audience doesn't care. They just want to see the monster come up, go boo, and then everybody go home and you, give, you guys give us your money. And, and for that reason, not the people who worked on the film and did the artistic stuff on the film because they did a great job, but the the production, it feels like this was a ca cash grab for them, a total cash grab. Someone should have protected the lore and the legacy of these characters in these movies. And ultimately, if you're someone who doesn't actually care about that, about the legacy of the characters or the lore of the previous movies or whatever, and you just want to see jump scares, you're going to like the movies. So there's going to be a lot of people who just, that's all they're there for, and you're going to get that because they're well-crafted jump scares, and they, they do the thing, you know? They do the thing people want to see. Do the fucking thing. Aha, you did it again. Awesome. But for the rest of us, I, I hate to say that... Uh, I think that Insidious has officially been milked 
to death. I think this whole genre has at this point, subgenre, like the, the the paranormal monster comes out and goes, ah, and then runs away. It's just dead. I think it's dead. I mean, the Nun 2 trailer just came out. It looks like it's probably going to be more of the same, even though there's a couple really cool shots in there. But I mean, I just think this entire subgenre has reached its cow tipping point. Like, it's just... There's, you, unless someone raises the stakes or does something really special and changes things up, I, I think this this entire subgenre is definitely in huge trouble. So I give Insidious the Red Door a 5.5 out of 10, and I do that for the sound, the, the acting, the cinematography, the camera work, the Insidious aura. Um, they, they got all that stuff right. It's just uh, an an the four and a half points I take off are completely because of the story and 110% the choices that they made with the characters and the lore. And it's just, you know, I just, damn, it's over. It's over, Rock. Nothing is over. It, it's fucking, it's over. But what do you guys think? Comment down below. Let me know. How do you feel? How do you feel about that whole subgenre? Are you just ready to move on from it? Or are you still all right with this? Is this, is this working for you? Is this, this, this is getting your, your goat milked? What? Comment down below. Let me know. I love your fucking faces, guys. Thanks for taking the time to watch this with me today. And we will see you guys live stream Saturday night, 8 p.m. We'll see you guys there. Hello, listener. Do you like scary movies? What's your favorite scary movie? Well, Jay and Mike like scary movies, too. You should go and subscribe to their podcast. We watched a movie. Because if you don't, I'll gut you like a... Well, I think you get the idea. Enjoy yourselves while you still can.